What's up, residents? It's your mayor, Alistair Back, once again with some huge news. Godzilla Kong just released last weekend, and it's taking the world by storm. Ignoring the critical score, because who cares about that? The audience rating for The New Empire is at a staggering 92%, which is the highest of the MonsterVerse. And it's receiving a cinema score of A-, which is the second highest next to Godzilla vs. Kong. So people seem to be having a really good time with it. I love the film personally, the characters were great, the action was fantastic, and the Scar King is easily one of my favorite villains in the Godzilla and Kong franchise. He's just so evil, I love it. But it also has a lot of heart in how it showcases Kong and Suko's relationship, how he's learning to trust after a lifetime of abuse and torment. The film has a lot to offer, and it seems to be really connecting with audiences. Before the film came out, the box office predictions landed between a relatively modest $45 and $55 million, somewhere in the realm of King of the Monsters' $47 million opening, with an estimated worldwide debut of $135 million. This comes from Variety, Deadline, Forbes, and Box Office Pro, who all said the same thing that the Easter holiday would help boost an overall sinking franchise, with each MonsterVerse film earning less each time domestically. Well, the MonsterVerse has only gone and obliterated those low-balling box office predictions by raking in $194 million. This makes it the biggest opening weekend for a film worldwide in 2024. Yes, despite mixed reviews from critics, the audience helped push this film to become a success. And with great word of mouth and not much competition coming up in April, it should help the film become a huge success and solidifying the MonsterVerse's place in pop culture going forward. And in terms of competition, Godzilla Kong went up against Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, Kung Fu Panda 4, and Dune Part 2, which is still performing very well. With Frozen Empire falling behind expectations, it's left the new empire on top of the competition. Now let's go in-depth as to what added to this success. The Hollywood Reporter stated, Warner Bros. and Legendary's Godzilla Kong The New Empire opened to a monstrous $80 million at the domestic box office, well ahead of an expected $45 to $55 million. The tentpole scored the second biggest opening in the MonsterVerse universe, no small feat for a fifth film in a franchise. It also delivered the fifth biggest Easter opening of all time, according to Sunday estimates, which is just crazy impressive. Globally, the film stomped to a $194 million launch after taking in $114 million overseas from 64 markets, including an impressive $44 million in China, where Legendary East is handling the movie. These days, many Hollywood event pictures don't come close to doing that level of business in China. On Monday, it will pass up the $46.5 million earned by June Part 2 to rank as the top-grossing Hollywood title of 2024. Godzilla Kong opened to $12.8 million in Mexico, a franchise best, and delivered the studio's biggest opening ever in India with $5.5 million. Elsewhere, the film earned $5.3 million in the UK in the first three days, Australia earned $3.7 million, and Brazil earned $2.5 million. It also has to be said that premium large formats like IMAX and Superscreen accounted for 48% of ticket sales, which is just insane. If you're going to go watch Godzilla Kong on anything, make sure it's the biggest screen possible. Now, bear in mind the film has yet to open in dozens of countries, so I expect Godzilla Kong The New Empire to vastly outgross Godzilla vs. Kong and Godzilla King of the Monsters, but by how much is yet to be seen. It's definitely going to outgross Godzilla vs. Kong's domestic earnings this week, and potentially even King of the Monsters' entire domestic run. Now, Variety also revealed something pretty mind-blowing that The New Empire had a relatively small budget of $135 million, which makes it the cheapest MonsterVerse film by about $25 million, next to Godzilla 2014 and Godzilla vs. Kong, which cost around $165 million. That means that to earn a profit, 
Godzilla Kong needs to earn $337 million, which is actually a really low turnover. It's gonna fly by that easily, which is just insane because so much happens in this film where I'd never guessed the budget was actually lower. Gareth Edwards' recent film The Creator also had a small budget of $80 million. It managed to do so much with the visuals and world that it comes across as mind-blowing that they did it on such a tight budget. Hell, Godzilla Minus One had a budget of around $12 million, and just look how good that film looks. It's earned an Academy Award for Best VFX. I guess Godzilla directors are just better. Adam Wingard is reportedly very hands-on with production. He has a vision that he sets out to execute, so there's no time spent on VFX shots that go to waste, like what happens with so many superhero films. After working on GBK, he nailed down the efficiency of time management. Also, as we covered through his production, GXK shot a lot of the film on location, which is significantly cheaper than hiring out studio space for two months. It's also clear he cut down on expensive lead actors and wanted a slimmer, more cost-effective cast. Knowing that people come for the real leads of the franchise, the King of the Monsters and the King of Skull Island. In comparison to the new Empire's $135 million budget, the new Indiana Jones film, Dial of Destiny, which has an old guy walking around some caves, cost $295 million. You could make two Godzilla Kong films and still have $25 million left over with how much that cost. The Flash as well, that cost $220 million. Fast X cost $340 million. I'm bringing this up because these inflated budgets make it harder for films to recoup their budget. There's a far greater risk there, which has led to famously disastrous results. But with the new empire costing a measly $135 million, means it'll make its money back easily and then earn enough to guarantee future entries. And I guarantee you this, after that box office opening weekend, Legendary is in talks with Adam Wingard right now to direct the next one for a 2027 release. I'm super happy that my niche, silly little monster franchise that people used to laugh at me for enjoying has become such a worldwide phenomenon. With the more serious, grounded story of Minus One that broke records and earned Godzilla's first Academy Award, combined with these silly, more action-packed MonsterVerse films that explode in popularity, Godzilla fans are eating good. We are in a new golden age for the King of the Monsters, and I just love it. So who's seen the new Empire? What did you make of it, and will you be seeing it again? Let us know in the comment section down below. Be sure to give this video a big old Kong-sized thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe and stomp the notification button to become a resident of Dangerville today. I've been Alistair, and we'll see you residents in the next one.